Greetings, I am the Monkey Lord, aka Chappers from the band Dorje, and today I'm really excited to say that I've teamed up with Musicism, um, and they are giving away a beautiful little red dwarf in a really simple competition. All you do is you go to the Musicism website, which is in the link below in the show more section, fill in the entry form, and you might win a Victory Amplification RD1. And I mean, this amp is so incredibly badass, mega proud of it. It's an absolute behemoth. Uh, I've toured it extensively across the UK. It's never let me down. Uh, in fact, this actual one <laughs> I've taken around the UK. I've got another little brother over here, um, which is, and they're just great amps. They're so loud if you need them to be. They have wonderful, smooth, saturated gain, lots of tonal variations but none of that comes with the confusion of lots of different controls to swap around and move. You don't get option paralysis is what I'm trying to say. It's just a great, simple method of getting great tones. Effects loop in the back, um, high setting, low setting. You know what it does. It does exactly what it says on the tin. And to celebrate the fact that we're gonna give one of these away, I figured it might be cool to teach the beginning of the tune all from Dorje. Um, and it's not too difficult. So if you are a beginner or intermediate, you've been playing for maybe a year or sort of six months and got your hands around a few basic power chords and things, you might find this a bit of a stretch, but a really cool thing to try and learn. Um, so this is how the beginning to all sounds. And I've literally got the game dialed in just be before 12 o'clock. Uh, the contour's a bit less. I've got the high switch in, I've got the low switch off, um, because there's a load of low end in this amplifier should you require it. Um, I'm on the high setting, but my neighbors don't mind. I'm going through a two by 12, um, and all I've got through the effects loop is the Immerse, um, which is just one of my favorite delay and reverb pedals from the amazing New Neighbor. Nothing else than the loop. Uh, we're just using an ambient mic to get the audio. Here's how all from Dorje sounds. <laughs> So not massively challenging. It's a really cool little riff, if I do say so myself. Um, I wrote it at the NAM show a couple of years ago, um, actually on a hot rod, Chapman Hot Rod MR1. This is a wonderful PRS. Thank you so much to PRS, for, for actually to Paul Reed Smith himself for giving me this um, at the last NAM show I attended. In fact, it was such a surprise. I didn't really understand at the time that he was giving it to me. Um, so thank you very much for that, Paul. And let me just talk you through really quickly and simply how to play this riff. I am tuned down a half step on every string and I'm drop tuned. So this is, uh, here are some tuning notes for you. I'm using the middle position and I've actually I'm coil tapped out as well, so it's, it's nice and clean sounding, but if I tap it back in. I've got the amp set to a, a nice warm crunch. And normally when I'm gigging, I have this on the high power mode, quite a lot of the volume in, but never all of it, because the sound techs can never handle that stage. Uh, I have the gain, uh, set to about sort of three or four o'clock and then I just use a tube screamer or a Mjolnir uh, in the front just to push it over into kind of lead tones and I put a boost in the effects loop. It gives you the crunchy backed off kind of clean tones and the high gain tones that I need to play live. So it's so so simple which is why I love this amplifier. And um, let's start with the first part of all. So simply we're going to be doing 
this is open, the top three strings. And I'm hammering the first finger down at the third fret. And then I strike it after I've hammered. And then I'm touching all the strings and muting them and doing two percussive hits so that you get that kind of sound. Um, and then I'm going to go... So just simply placing the finger across all the strings but fretting down the... Well, pretend they're named after if they're tuned in standard, so the E, A and D string. Third fret, fifth fret, and then open. So thus far we have this. Once you've done that, we're going to do some really cool sliding dyadic intervallic stuff, which sounds really stupid. Actually, we're just going like that. <laughs> I slide into it. And I'm using my third finger and my second finger, the A string and the D string. And then I play, I'm, I'm going pick, pluck, pluck, and I'm pick the A string pluck the D string, and then pluck the open G string. Then I'm going to go open on the A string, and then hammer down on the 5th fret with my 1st finger, and then I'm going to reach over with either the little finger or the 3rd, whichever you're comfortable with, and I'm going to pluck the D and G string harmonics at the 7th fret. Like that. So it sounds like this. I'll do that slowly for you. So, so far, we've got this. Now it repeats with kind of an answer to that question. And it's almost like furthering the previous question, if you will. I'll do that again. It's the same up until. But then rather than doing the two harmonics, I just go. So that's seventh fret, which I plucked. I hammer, I pull, I pull off to the open D string. Now, just this tiny part of the riff actually is quite a useful exercise in hammer and pull. For example, if you just isolate that one part there, it's really useful to get the hammer and then the next hammer and then maintain the position of this finger while you pull and release the little finger because sometimes as you pull um, to release the little finger you'll psychologically move this finger and you'll find you get a raised pitch note which you don't want next up nice and easy just open to the third because of mutes back to the first fret with a slight bend across all three strings and then to the open D now we're going to slide up all the way to the 8th fret and I'm fretting down the E, A and D string and then I'm actually reaching with a little finger and a third to the 11th and the 10th fret on the B and the G string to play a beautiful chord. So that's... And then almost to kind of end the story, I've got this little phrase. Which is just uh, 12th fret, 10th fret, 5th fret, 7, 8, 7, open. So. Up until there, I'll play you through. Now I want to 
wanted a build-up part that took us into the beginning of the verse. So I, I wrote this little slidey part inspired by a Joe Satriani piece I really enjoy. So this is the, uh, this is the piece. And all we're doing is we're using the A string and the D string, uh, using the fifth fret on the A, pluck it, and I'm picking the A and I'm plucking the D. So they're the same note to begin with. So I'm picking the A string and I'm plucking the D string and I'm simply going to play a melody with the A string and then every time I play a melody note, follow it with an open D string. So the melody is this. Which is just 5th fret, 6th fret, uh, and then 10th fret, 9th fret. So it would sound like this. of it is all heavy and nasty and evil and I'll play it through for you but it's just power chords I'm sure any of you could learn that <laughs> capable of outputting. Um. such a musical kind of game that I, I, I can never get enough of it. <laughs> It's ridiculously. A bit much for this room. <laughs> anyway, good luck with the competition. If you win it, please let me know. Post uh, an Instagram photograph or, or let me know. We'll make a little video for YouTube and show off the amp. It's a great acquisition to acquire. I have been Rob Chappers. Take it easy, prosper and be well. Chappers out. <laughs>